this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is the Seagate Firecuda 540 Series Gen 5 MVME SSD. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you the setup process for this drive, how to install it, the things that you need to think about along the way, and some tips and tricks to make sure it's running as it should be. Now, this is a Gen 5 MVME SSD, which means that to make the most out of it, you're going to need a compatible motherboard that has a Gen 5 slot on it, which will be Intel or AMD boards of the most recent variant. In this setup, I'm actually using a Z690 Strix gaming Wi-Fi motherboard, and that includes a single NVMe SSD Gen 5 drive at the top nearest to the CPU. And the installation for this driver is fairly straightforward. However, I did need to do a BIOS update to get it working. So I'm gonna show you some of that later on. Now, one important thing to note is making sure that when you're removing the covers for these, so the heat sinks, that you remove any stickers and make sure the thermal pads are in a good state. You can see this drive has been loved and used. So some of the thermal pads are a bit iffy, but I am gonna make sure that it's got some good coverage on it. Now, Gen 5 drives can run particularly hot. This drive is actually designed so that if it ramps up to around 90 degrees, then it will thermal throttle. So that's the max operating temperature. I'm actually gonna do a video separately on this drive and some thermal testing of it. But I'm gonna do some benchmarks later on to show you the performance. It's very important to use a heat sink with it though because running at 10,000 megawatts a second, it can get particularly hot. So it's really important that you use a heat shield like this pre-included one with this motherboard. You can see it's got a nice chunky heat shield on it. Get those stickers in there and the thermal pads. Now with this motherboard, it also has a clip to hold that drive in place, which makes it easy. Alternatively, you might need some M2 screws, which I'll link to in the description for screws that you can purchase. Now, obviously set this up during the build and installation of a PC, but you can do it if you've already got your motherboard installed. Just make sure you unplug it first before you go through that process of removing that shield and then installing the drive. Now, the next step is to go into the BIOS and check that drive's recognized. I discovered that it wasn't when I went into my BIOS settings. Press delete when you first start your PC up and then go into the boot section and the drive configuration options and have a look or look in there. You can see if I go into the NVMe configuration on here, it's only recognizing the Corsair drive which is my Windows boot drive, which I have in there as well. And so it's not seeing the other drive. Now it may be that you can change some of the settings in here. So if you go into the storage configuration settings, you might see the drives listed or at least the spots. So this is M2 underscore one, for example, on this board, and perhaps it's set to the wrong mode. So if you notice that, make sure you set it to NVMe mode or auto rather than disabled, that might help. But despite that, going through each of the various different sections in here, I couldn't see the drive as being recognized as being plugged in. So the BIOS on this is actually fairly out of date. So what I'm gonna do here is show you how I updated it. Now this is obviously gonna vary from motherboard to motherboard, but I wanna show you the steps for this Strix motherboard. So if you happen to have a similar one, you can do it. So you head over to the relevant website then go over to the driver and tools section, BIOS and firmware, and find the latest BIOS update. Now it is recommended you don't do this unless you really need to, but my BIOS is so massively out of date that this Gen 5 drive isn't working. So I'm gonna download the BIOS there, and it comes over as a zip file, but you do need to make a couple of changes to this. So what we need to do is we need to extract all these files, and then as you'll see from the notes here, there's also a recommendation on running the BIOS file renaming tool that's included in that zip file. And that'll then rename it to this relevant file name, which will help the tool in the BIOS to recognize it as one of the things. So you can see, go through this BIOS renaming process, and then you've got that there. And then you need to just copy that over onto a thumbstick, insert it into USB port on the back of your motherboard, reboot your PC and then head over into the BIOS section. Now I will warn you that it is worth noting that BIOS updates can be tricky and if it goes wrong, this could cause a problem, but this could be one of the ways to fix it if you can't see the drivers as not being recognized. So you head over into the BIOS and you go to the tool section and then BIOS flashback, and then you just find that relevant BIOS file and then apply it and then go through those. Now, once we get into Windows, we're then looking for create and format hard disk partitions. So just search for that using the Windows Start key. You can see that under disk management. And when we launch that, if we're successful in that BIOS update and now the drive's being recognized, you can then basically initialize that disk, start it up. And then what we need to do is we need to format it in order for Windows to recognize it. So Windows has picked up and disk management 
management, but you won't see it in Explorer until you also format it, assign it a drive letter, and then a volume label. So what I'm doing here is just basically going to name it Seagate Fire Cuda 540 so that I know what drives what, and you can see the difference between the two, and go through that process of basically quick formatting it. This will help Windows to recognize that drive and see it alongside the other one. So this is one of the steps that you can go through. Obviously, I've shown you a few different things here. Check the BIOS to see if it's recognized in there. If it is, you don't need to do the BIOS update, obviously. That was only because I couldn't get it working for me. And if you have that same sort of problem where it's not been recognized, but you can't change the settings in the BIOS, Maybe a BIOS update is the next step. But one of the first steps is probably going through this disk management option and just seeing if it's initialized. Now it does take some time to format. You can see it's taken a bit of time here. But once it's formatted, you'll then get a notification pop up to say it's been recognized. If you go over to File Explorer and then click on this PC, you'll see we have two drives now, my boot drive and the Firecuda drive. So those are easily recognized. Now the other thing that's worth checking is making sure this drive is actually running at the right speed because obviously it's a Gen 5 drive and hopefully you've installed it in a Gen 5 slot on your motherboard. You want to make sure that it's running at maximum speed. So one way to do it with the ASUS setup is in Armory Crate. Now I'm gonna show you a minute how to do it with other boards. But in Armory Crate, if you go over to the device section and then click on your motherboard and you can see there's a tab for disk info. If you head over to disk info and then select the relevant drive, you'll see that the transfer mode is set here. It's PCIe Gen 5 X4. That's the important bit is that X4, that means it's using four PCIe lanes at Gen 5 speeds, so they will be getting maximum speed out of it. So this is very important. If you populate some motherboards with multiple NVMe drives, it can actually reduce the PCIe lanes down to X2, which means you get half the speed that you'd want. Now, another way to do this is with Hardware Info 64. This is a free tool that you can download. So this will work on other motherboards. It doesn't need to be with a Zeus. So open that tool up, and I'll leave a link in the description to it. Then head over to the Drive section, NVMe Drives, and then look for your Seagate drive that you have. And then you can see in here that it's using a drive controller, NVMe, PCIe 4 times speed. So we're basically making sure we've got four lanes here available for it and that's ensuring maximum speed there. You can also see at a glance the current drive temperature and the maximum drive temperature, so the critical temperature here is 89 degrees C. So it's important to have good airflow in your system and to have that heat sink well installed and to make sure you've got those thermal pads with good contact on the drive. And then one way to test to make sure everything running smoothly is to download Crystal Dismark, which is another free tool. Obviously you've paid a lot of money for the drive potentially, and for everything to run it. So you wanna make sure it's running at the right speed. Now, Crystal Dismark is a benchmarking tool that will run through various passes on your drive to make sure it's running at the maximum read write speeds and getting the best performance out of it. We've already ensured that we've got the right number of lanes set up here, but doing this, you can also test a number of things. You'll see on the left-hand side, I've got hardware monitor running, and I've also got task manager running as well. The idea here is I want to check that everything's running at the right speed but also that the temps are good. So on the left-hand side, you can see the current temperatures of this drive. So we're looking at about 48 degrees maximum during the initial test. It does go up a bit. I found that with several passes, it was somewhere in the 60 degree mark, which actually isn't too hot for this setup. And you can see once we get to the end of the testing that the maximum read speed we got was 10,000 megabytes a second and write speed is 9,600. So pretty fast and it does what it should be doing, which is nice. Although obviously the more you use it, if you have a hot system, you may find some thermal throttling, but it has got a good guarantee on it. So it should last and last for a long time. And it should be a nice little drive to add to your system. Hopefully with these tips and tricks that I've shown you in this video, you'll get your drive running as you want it to and not have any problems with it. Be sure to check out the links in the description to other videos I've done on mistakes to avoid with your NVMe drives and things to be aware of and more. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend, you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.